today I am preparing for my uh, mental health and wellness training um, slash art class that I'm doing tomorrow for a state funded um, nonprofit organization. And I'm very excited about it, but feeling the nerves because every time I do one of these, it's like, oh my gosh, they believe in me. <laughs> And then it's like, oh, all of the details and things that you have to pull together, all the materials and supplies and getting, you know, everything together, preparing for it. It's a lot of, it's like preparing for a art market or for a product launch. There's just so many details that go into it, no matter how many times you do it. I mean, every time it does feel a little bit easier and easier because you have an idea of like what you want to do, what worked and what didn't work in the past. But nonetheless, it gets still very like, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to show you some behind the scenes of getting things together, what I put together, what I use, and um, I'm going to stop talking and show you what I got. So under here, under my table, I have all of the pottery. We are going to be painting pottery tomorrow, and I totally forgot that I have to do this, is take the barcodes off the bottom and replace them with my label so that when they take them home they have my uh, website if they want to contact me or order um products from me you just never know artwork and stuff so i got these um very early on when they hired me and so there are 16 terracotta pots and then i have these um little pots these have been working out i have done I think four classes last year and here's the easier way so these are little pots so instead of using palette plates we use these and then they can take this home if they still have paint in it and they haven't finished their project there's paint in here they can take at home and I always add um, some varnish in here for them so they can varnish and seal their paintings at home so we've got that I also have these Sorry, it's going to be loud for a second. So these are plastic placemats, which I usually buy the ones that are disposable that you just peel off the strip and then place it on the table. But I decided to get these because they're reusable. There we go. They're reusable and I would just need to take the time to wash them and clean them well when I come home. I can scrape the paint off of them. They're very, um, very durable. And so we're going to see how that goes. It will make the setup process so much easier because instead of having to peel and da -da 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 -da, reduces waste also. So I'm just like adding these onto the um, tables. I have some baby wipes. I'm going to bring some paper towels and I have some, it's a hot mess. I am so sorry, but this is the reality. Um, paint brushes. So, um, a long time ago, I bought several sets of the art class paintbrush sets, but something I've been doing, I'm going to stop that <laughs> is that if somebody didn't finish, I was letting them take the paintbrush home, like just grab a paintbrush and take it home. Well, that causes me to have to keep purchasing and having a mixed match amount of brushes. So this time around, um, I used to also um, have like four or five sets of brushes. This time around, I'm like, no, we're not doing all of that. We're just going to do two. I'm just going to pick two sizes, um, three the most. So thankfully today there was a sale at Michael's and they were buy one, get one 50% off, which was perfect. So yeah, that's what we're going to be. That's what I'm doing right now. Just separating all of the numbers and then whatever I have the most of, that's what I'm going to pack with me to take tomorrow. And then I'll just replenish these baskets. Um, I separate them in groups of like color families so like blues and greens go in here then i have pinks and reds and purples in here and then this one has like oranges browns 
oranges, browns, yellows, gold. And then this one, I need to, I don't even remember where I bought this from. I think I bought this from Michael's. Um, I would like to get another one, but these are kind of like more greens and turquoises, kind of like odds and ends. So blacks and white, um, I might make this like black, white, gray, and brown. But these have been really handy to just show, and they look nice to just show up with these and then people can just like go through them and find the colors that they want. Another thing that I have that is new is this color cube that is from Sarah Renee Clark. There's a volume one, there's a volume two. She also has a digital version, um, but I just have, it's basically um, flashcards of different color palettes. And so there's like a photo on the back of where the inspiration came from and then the color palettes. And then back here, there are various shades that you can use. And then if you are using this digitally, like on the computer, you can look up the hex code if you want to know, like get the exact code for like a color on the computer. So there's a lot of different colors. There's warms, there's cool, there are some funky colors. And I think um, this is gonna be super, super helpful. This will be the first class that gets to experience this. Um, for me, I I try like, it was a little bit helpful for me. I'm um, just seeing different color ways. Like, you know, that's me all day. Um, I mean, look at that, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that. You see that? <laughs> but um I just I just like to find funky colors and put them together, but I know a lot of people are not um that's not their strength. So being able to have like set colors will be helpful um with them trying to figure out what colors they want to use. It helps them pick colors that are complimentary not only complimentary but that look nice especially because i tell them pick a color at your home or in your office like imagine where you would want to put up this piece of artwork and then what are the colors that are already in that space and choose those colors so if you have like one color like i know i like neutrals or i know i like browns or i like pink this will be perfect because you can just find a pink find a brown and then find which ones you like. So basically what I'm gonna do is just take like just a stack and lay it on each table. I think I might end up having separate tables. I'm not sure the setup exactly, but I will just like put out a few cards here and there that people can pick from and then they can pick their colors as they choose. Next, what I'm gonna do is to open this up and refill my bins. One thing I will say is that I prefer the matte um, paints because, and I might need to open all of these up. I prefer the matte because they have a better coverage and they build better than the satin or gloss paints. Um, they dry faster. And so if you're working on a painting and there's a lot of details to get to in a short amount of time, matte is definitely the best way to go um and i learned that the hard way of trial and error just the more that like i said earlier the more that i do these the smarter i get <laughs> and i just learn different tricks and um things that work that help make the process easier so yeah i'm gonna have to go through and cut all of these open i'll be back when i'm done with that and then this is everything that I'm taking. I believe I have everything. Um, so as you'll see, all of the pots have been relabeled with my logo. I'm trying to get a good, <laughs> here we go. With my logo on there, my website. So there are 18, I believe in here. And then I have my water pitchers. I do white 
for clean water and blue for dirty water. And then I have my paint pots, my color cube, the paints. I don't know if I told you already, but I did go ahead and clear out all of the satin and metallic colors that I had. I have just like a metallic silver here. Um, this is a medium uh, soft body. And then I have a gold here as well. And I went ahead and took out all of the satin colors so that it's just all matte because matte um, does so much better with dry time and coverage and it's just easier to work with than the satin or gloss. Then I have some freshly sharpened pencils so that they can um, map out their patterns. And then I have the paint brushes here. We've got um, baby wipes, cups back here, napkins, um, the, uh, what do you call these, placemats. I even have a blow dryer. I need to buy like two, I want to buy like one or two more blow dryers. Just in case you need, you know, you need to dry something really quick. I also have this, got this from Michaels. It's a long roll of um, plastic tablecloth so there aren't any wrinkles and it's easy like you can just roll out as much as you need and then cut it and that just makes for like a nicer look than having all of those wrinkles in the plastic cover and then I'm gonna put everything in here so yeah all right so I've got my template done I printed out a bunch of these so I will um be passing these out tomorrow <clears throat> at the end so that it doesn't get messed up with their paintings and then I've got my notes here yeah I'm excited it's gonna be a good day so this is what I'm wearing today thrifted <laughs> it is a a T-length skirt. I'll show you um, better later. And then I have on my Life as a Roller Coaster shirt from Coco Natasha and my cropped denim jacket, which I believe is also thrifted. Represent Black History Month. My earrings. Got my hair in a kind of full hot pineapple bang look. Yeah, that's what we're wearing. So... Let's get on with it. Okay, we got everything packed up. This should probably go somewhere else, but for now that's good. Got everything, a lot of things fit in this, and then I have this wagon. Pull this out and then pack it up with all of this stuff so I don't have to hold a lot of things in my hand. So, all right, let's go.
Hey guys, <laughs> so I'm on my way home and I'm just soaking everything in of what happened and it was a success. Everything went really, really well, better than I could have hoped for. Um, everybody enjoyed it. Everybody um, was able to relax and release and learn something new or, or be reminded of things that they already knew. As far as taking care of their mental health, I told them, you know, my hope out of anything that we did that day or that I taught them or told them that today was that they would be able to become more self-aware of their mental health and taking care of themselves. And so it was a really good experience. Um, shared a little bit about my story. Um, about my background in as a mental health therapist and case management and um yeah it was really really good it was really good um <laughs> is what what really gets me is like so this is my fifth class that I've done of this my first class of this year and it was at the location of where it was across the street was the crisis stabilization unit and two nursing homes the crisis stabilization unit that's where people get that's where the intake is for when people get baker acted um this one in bartow for peace river if they get baker acted through peace river um uh, this is where they go and that is where I started my internship um, 1,000 hours <laughs> my internship for my master's degree in licensed mental health counseling and so I would help do the intakes for people who were Baker acted um, I would do the hotline um, the suicide hotline and crisis intervention hotline I would be a part of the teams that go out to homes if somebody, if the police call them like we need therapists, I would be a part of the team that goes out to the homes to help talk people down. Um, and help assess if somebody was suicidal and needed to go and be Baker acted. Um, And then the other two places that I did, the nursing homes, I when I left the mental health field and became a case manager, uh, long-term care for Medicaid, um, I had those two nursing homes. Um, I had clients there. And now I'm about to pass <laughs> the building where I used to have my office as a counselor for um, in the DCF office I was a counselor through Tri-County which is a substance abuse program and I used to work with their family intervention services program where I would um, if somebody had an open case with DCF Department of Children and Families or I think other places call it CPS um, Child Protective Services, if they had an open case and there was involvement with substances, usually it was like marijuana, sometimes it was meth, crack, uh, yeah. If that was part of their case, they had to see a family intervention specialist and I would stay with them for like three to six months up to a year, working with them in their homes, doing, you know, therapy and counseling with them. And um, I just passed that building where I used to work. And in all of those places, I never imagined I would be doing what I'm doing today. I never even knew or could think that this stuff was possible. I'm literally about to pass one of the roads where I had a client where I had to go to their house. Like some of these houses is like... Y'all, I've been through some stuff. I've been through some stuff. And if you don't, you will not ever understand the magnitude unless you have been in these fields, working in these fields, 
And these were some challenging populations with some like devastating cases and so it was just so heavy and it's like I wish I had somebody like me <laughs> to come into the workplace and encourage me and inspire me and remind me to take care of myself to take care of my own mental health to be self-aware of what I'm feeling what my environment looks like not only at work but at home like I wish I had somebody like me come in and now I am the somebody that I needed and I just hope that whatever I share with these people these um, clinicians these social workers that it's I know I planted seeds one of the ladies today she was like you're planting seeds I'm like that's my goal just plant seeds even if I'm not talking about Jesus or God he's in the mix <laughs> And I, you know, I just come so far and it's such a full circle moment. Like, you guys, I, uh, God is good and I'm so grateful. And now I get to go home. It's 12, 12. I get to ho go home, unpack, and now switch on my mommy hat and... I gotta go buy Valentine's Day cards and stuff for my son's Valentine's party. <laughs> oh, get me something to eat. I just, I'm just so grateful to God for these opportunities. And um, when you walk in the gifts that God has given you, not trying to be like anybody else, not trying to compare yourself, not trying to step in anybody else's lane. But if you stay in the lane that God has given you, the talents, and you walk in the gifts and talents that God has given you, he will open doors for you that you never knocked on. Doors that you didn't even know were there. He will open those doors for you. And when those doors open, walk in them with confidence, knowing that the Most High God chose you specifically to walk through the door and you have everything you need because he resides in you because he sent you he chose you do not be afraid when those doors open because he has chosen you to walk through that door and no man can close what God has opened whatever is for you is for you if things don't work out don't catch, don't like try to throw a fit about it. Like if it didn't work out, it probably wasn't for you in the first place. He's got something different. He's got something better. He's got a different path for you. Just be confident in whatever God has for you is for you and walk in it. And I could go on and on, but I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to focus on the road, make sure I make take the right step, the right turn to get home. But I'm just like... All of those years of crying to my bosses, crying at home, crying myself to sleep, not wanting to wake up because I knew the next day would come and I would have to do this stuff all over again, go to these jobs, work, deal with these people who were so broken that they really could not receive what I had to give them. And now, and then go, myself being in that place of brokenness and and feeling defeat and hopelessness and not sure like having my family be the inspiration to like to not give up on life God is amazing he is amazing and I'm just so grateful to be here I'm so grateful and um, I can't wait to see what else God has in store for me? I told him this morning, God, whatever you have planned for me, I'm going to just walk in it. I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. I just want to make sure that at the end of the day, my family is taken care of, like financially, that we have what we need to survive, to have some fun, and to be able to give back to the community, to financially our, in our time. Um, and effort those are my three things that all that's all I want right now that's all I want 
that is what success looks like to me right now and to be able to do what I just did and get paid for it because some people are like, oh that's too much okay that's that's fine <laughs> there's somebody else who's waiting on me who needs what I have who values what I have and I just want to thank the Healthy Start Coalition and um, their directors and um, my friend Tanya who put them on to me and just knocked on the door for me and then they opened it and I walked in and it was a yes and so I'm just so grateful all right I will talk to you guys in the next one <laughs>